that I'm going to show you what does dual mesh in geometry nodes. Let's take the camera, the light, go to geometry nodes. Let's close this and this panel. Let's create a new profile and I'm going to delete this and I'm going to create a grid. Let's make it bigger and let's select this view and let's select wireframe. So we have a simple grid with four faces and we have this node called dual mesh. If we add it here, this happens. So what happened here? Let me explain. Dual mesh, basically what does is to add one point in the center of every face. So we have now four faces and it deletes all the other vertices and just create one. So it does this for every face. So we will have four vertex and then it connect all the vertex. So that's what happened when we add dual mesh, as you can see. And if we click here, this means that we get back the boundaries. So the limits of the geometry. We get this, but we have the rest. Let's see with another example. For example, an ecosphere. I'm going to disable this and connect it here. I'm going to add more subdivisions. For example, if we add a dual mesh, now this is a triangle, so we will have a point here, 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 and this will be connected like this, like an hexagon. So let's check it. And that's the shape we have now after adding a dual mesh with an ecosphere. You can subdivide more, but you will have this type of hexagon thanks to dual mesh, because now we are using triangles. So before, after. You can do different experiments to see how it works, but basically this is what does. For example, if we add it in a cone, now, let me reverse this. We have this. Why? The same concept. Here we have a face, so the center of this face will be here, and the same for all the lateral faces. So we have like a, a circle, and here we have another face, so the center is here. So if we connect this with this, we have the inverted cone. Let's use another example. I'm going to mute this, and now we are going to use a cube. And I'm going to ask you, what shape do you think we are going to get after using this? I'm going to leave you three seconds to think about, and I'm going to give you an answer. So remember, we are going to get the center of every face for all the six faces, and we are going to connect it like this. So basically, we are going to get something like a diamond. So let's check it. This is the shape after adding dual mesh in a cube. So if you want to get this shape, this geometry, just use a cube with dual mesh. Let's see another example. Let's come back to the grid, and I'm going to show you something interesting. I'm going to convert this to curve to mesh. Actually, mesh to curve, sorry. And after I'm going to convert it again to mesh to curve, so we can see like a wireframe. Using, for example, a circle curve. Let's add 0 0.01. And we have this shape. Let's make it bigger, something like two. Okay, so if we add, for example, another dual mesh, this is getting smaller, right? Okay. But we can do something interesting here. What we can do is add extrude mesh. And look what is going to happen. Oh, now we have this wave pattern. Why? Because if we change the view, basically, let me disable this. Remember when we extrude, we are adding another face. So now we have this top face because we are extruding. If I mute this, we are extruding the shape. So if we have another new face, 
and we have dual mesh, we are going to convert this in a single point. So we will get something like that. That's why we have this view. You can extrude more if you want. But if you want to make it flat, what you can do is just to add zero. And we have like this pattern. So using dual mesh with extrude mesh, you can create interesting patterns. You can click here if you want the boundaries. And another trick, if you add another dual mesh, let's see what happens. We have now this shape. So you can try to play with extrude mesh and dual mesh to try to create different patterns and maybe use it for something or just to practice and see how it works. And I'm going to show you another example with a cube. So let's get this and let's mute this one and this one. Let's come back to use a cube. Let's disable this one. So we have a cube. And if we extrude this, we are going to have another face. Now we cannot see it, but we have other faces. It's just that they are hiding. And if we add one dual mesh, we have this shape. Interesting, right? If we add another, we have this shape. So just try to practice, and maybe you are going to create interesting wireframe shapes or just normal shapes. And for example, the other day I was practicing with this, and if I offset the extrude in negative, if you leave it like that, minus 0 0.5, we get this interesting shape. A cube inside a cube. I saw this shape in a YouTube video that they were talking about the 4D dimension or something really abstract. And I think this is called a tesseract or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But if you search this name on YouTube or internet, you will find a lot of images showing this geometry. The shadow in three dimensions of a four dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. And I just discovered it just trying with dual mesh, an extrude, and a cube. So, as you can see, sometimes trying different nodes or just duplicating the same node and adding another or after, before, you can get a really interesting shapes that sometimes one didn't know until you try it. So, I hope you like this video, you learned something new, and if you want to learn more, I recommend you to subscribe, leave a like, and see you in the next video.